Hey everybody, this is Jerichos, and welcome to another One Shot Saturday. Today I'm playing Lantern of Worlds. This is an RPG that is actually a demo right now. The game is not complete, but I was approached by the game developer to take a look at this. And it looked pretty interesting, so I figured why not? Now, this is going to be the first of a trilogy, is the plan. So he's got some pretty ambitious plans for that. Will it be any good? I mean, hey, we'll find out. Let's go ahead and hop right in and see what we're getting into. And right off the bat, I like the kind of the art style on the menu screen. Welcome, mortal. Tomorrow is a great day for you. The beginning of a quest that may shape the future of the kingdom of Idunia. And perhaps, even the world that's... But now, you are in my domain, in the land of dreams, and I am interested in you. Know that your life force lights up like a very bright star, in the eternal constellation of time and space. Tell me of yourself, mortal. Are you a man, or a woman? Oh, didn't realize we were playing a Pokemon game. <laughs> okay, uh, in all seriousness though, uh... Interesting looking character designs just from the silhouettes. Let's pick a man. Please describe yourself for me. <laughs> Alright, well, I guess. Uh, why not? We'll, we'll go with the goatee. And let's go ahead and enter in the name. There we go. I thank you, mortal. Now, what is your chosen profession? Hmm, wizard, rogue, or warrior? I'm going with warrior. I thank you, mortal. But now you must wake and rise with the morning sun, for your adventure is about to begin. I do like that he's got voiceover for the start there. Oh, a tournament. I'm glad I picked Warrior. Kind of catchy music here. It's got me kind of hyped for this, you know, probably medieval style. You have entered the famous Great Tournament to become the new royal adventurer of the Kingdom of Idunia. Today is the first day of the tournament. You stand in the center of the tournament field, surrounded by colorful tents and pavilions. Between the tents, on long wooden benches, sit men and women, farmers and craftsmen, spectators from all corners of the kingdom. Next to you on the field stand your opponents, all the warriors with a desire to become the new royal adventurer of Idunia. Before you, at the far end of the field, rises a wooden stage, decorated with shields and flags of all the provinces of Idunia. On the stage sits King Veldemar on a wooden throne, surrounded by his royal advisors. The king rises from his throne, the murmur of the crowd ebbs away. Warriors, speaks the king. You have gathered here today to participate in a great event. A great tournament in which you will do battle to prove yourself worthy of the title of Royal Adventure of Idunia. I wish you all the best, and may Odin be with you. The king raises his hand in salute, and then takes his place upon the throne. The warriors from the field disperse, and as you follow them to the edge of the field, you see that two warriors remain, facing off against each other. The first day of the tournament has begun. Well, I'm excited. When do I get to fight? Welcome to the Tournament Grounds. Here, you can visit traitors and manage your hero. To manage your hero, use the right mouse button to go to the hero screen. And we have two hero points at the start, with which you can increase the abilities of your hero. Go to skill and improve abilities to customize. Alright. When you're done, go to the cross swords in the center of the tournament field to start your first battle, but don't forget to equip your weapon first. Yeah, that, that might be important. Alright, let me at this. Okay, so skills. Um, I've got, well, let's see, what are these? Second Wind and Power Attack. We'll have to figure those out in battle, I guess. Okay. Attack, Defense, all the usual stats. Hmm. 
double the attack. And let's check equipment. You know what? Let's optimize, see what it gives us first. Uh, is that all we have? We just have a long sword. Okay. Well, it's better than nothing. And save. Just in case. Now, let's. Come on. There we go. Yes. What am I getting into here? Let's find out. You have watched several warriors take to the field. Victors have emerged and warriors have been struck down and defeated. All to the cheers and applause of the great crowd surrounding the field. Now it is your turn to fight. Your first opponent emerges from a simple brown tent and enters the field. He doesn't appear too threatening, a farm boy by the looks of it, carrying an old sword and shield. Which have seen better days. The young man steps forward and addresses you. Greetings, warrior. I wish you a good fight and may the best of us win. With that, the young man readies his weapon. On the great stage at the far end of the field, the king's steward rises. He holds out a wooden rod and then casts it onto the field. Farm boy emerged. Okay, so... I don't have anything I can do there. There's our skills. Doesn't tell me what to do, but you know what? Attempt to just... Let's open up with a power attack. Sure, he's got a shield. We want to hit him as hard as we can. Ooh, half his health. Can't do power attack. Oh, it's got a timer. I was wondering if I had MP. Um, let's see what the second wind does. Oh! It heals! Well, that's pretty nice. Okay. Go ahead and attack him. Once more. And we win. Nice chunk of experience there. Do I get a shield? Can I keep a shield? Oh, well, we got coins. The young man, enthusiastic and strong as he may be, is no match for your skill and prowess. The young man raised his hand. Stop. Enough. You have beaten me. I surrender to your might. As you nod in approval, the spectators rise from their benches and give you a long and enthusiastic applause. From the wooden stage, the king's steward descends and walks towards you. Well done, warrior. Here's your reward for your first victory. The steward hands you a leather pouch containing five. Alright, well... Let's go ahead and launch right in. Yes, I do. It is the second day of the tournament. Many would-be warriors and inexperienced participants have been defeated and carried off the field, and it's praise and cheers for the victors. Now, it is your turn again to do battle. From a richly decorated tent, your second opponent emerges and walks onto the field. It is a young nobleman from Lysa, clad in chainmail and carrying a long sword. The nobleman steps forward and addresses you. What's this? The young man speaks haughtily. I had expected more than such rebel. The young nobleman seems overly confident, but not very experienced. On the great wooden stage, the king's steward rises and casts the wooden rod upon the field. Alright, well you know what? The first guy was respectful. This guy's just a douche. I'm gonna beat the crap out of him. Let's start with a power attack and just knock this guy down as fast as possible. And honestly, I don't even need second win. Bye bye! Ooh, we leveled up! And hey! bit more experience, uh, not experience, uh, a bit more HP. And ten coins from that douche. The young nobleman lies defeated upon the field. The spectators rise from their benches and give you a long and enthusiastic applause. From the wooden stage, the king's steward descends and walks towards you. Well done, warrior. Here is your reward for your second victory. The steward hands you a leather pouch containing fifteen gold coins. 
And we got a hero point for leveling up. But you know what? I say... I'm going full berserker here. Just keep upgrading strength for now. Uh, oh, my health didn't refill. Alright, well, let's see... What's over here? You come upon a green tent, embroidered with gold images of flowers and woodland animals. From the tent, a strong scent of herbs and spiders reaches you. You can hear someone softly singing inside. As you approach the tent, the singing stops, and moments later, a young woman emerges from the tent. The woman smiles as she sees you. Hello there. I haven't seen you here before. Are you in need of healing? Or perhaps some potions? I am Siri, the druidess. And you are in a tournament. I recognize you now. I'm most pleased to meet you. If I can help you with anything, please let me know. Why not? Let's see. Well, I don't need a magic potion. Let's do a healing potion. And one is probably enough. That's cool. Let's see what's... Ooh, what's down here? Oh, come on. Controls are just a little awkward. You come upon a large brown tent of thick leather. From an improvised chimney, columns of thick black smoke rise up. From the inside of the tent comes the sound of loud clanging and banging, of hammering, the sizzling of hot steel and the wheezing of bellows. A great heat emanates from the tent. As you approach, the noises stop, and from the opening of the tent appears a large, burly man, clad in a leather apron, stained with soot and ash. Ah, you must be that young adventurer. I have heard about you. It seems you have great skill for a youngster such as yourself. The man smiles warmly. Well, I wish you all the best in the tournament. If you need weapons or armor, or some repairs done, come visit me. The man sits down upon a wooden stool in front of the tent, and takes a pipe from one of the pockets of his apron. My name is Bjarni, by the way. Glad to have met you. Well, I definitely want to trade with Bjarni. Oh, I want the battle axe. And I don't think I have enough money for the leather armor. Yeah, well, it was worth a shot. Let's equip our battle axe. And... Let's see. Um, did that not change our attack at all? It didn't change our attack at all. Well, that's a little annoying. I wonder if it's supposed to. Oh, come on. Okay. Go in. There we go. Maybe I should have bought the armor. This is loading for a long time. <laughs> you come upon a red tent of expensive looking cloth. The cloth is embellished with strange arcane symbols in a golden thread. Next to the tent lies a small glittering pond. Before the tent stands a wooden table and behind it, on an expensive looking wooden chair, sits a middle-aged man. The man seems to be scribbling something on a piece of parchment and is mumbling softly to himself. He seems to be wholly unaware of your presence. As you make your presence known, the man looks up with a start. He peers at you, squinting his eyes. Oh, ah, I, I am sorry. I did not hear you approach. But where are my manners, by tears lost hand? I'm getting to be a quite the old fool. The man smiles at you. Let me introduce myself. I am Fazl, traveler and storyteller. And you are one of the contestants in the tournament, are you not? How very kind of you to visit me. I am here for posterity, you see, to document the tournament and all the fights, and give a true and honest account of all that happens here. Feel free to ask me any questions you like. I have traveled far and wide, and seen many strange and magical places, and can tell you a lot about the history of the kingdom of Aduni. Only, not right now, if you please. I'm very busy recording the last fight, which was quite a show indeed. 
but return soon and I'll tell you everything you want to know. Hmm, interesting. Oh, and his question mark went away. So, I guess it's time. Let's go and start the next fight. Do you wish to start the next fight? Yes, please, I do. You have retired to your tent to sleep until the next day, when the third day of the tournament awaits you. You fall quickly asleep. Suddenly, a noise awakens you. Something of a branch cracking beneath a boot. All is dark around you. The only light comes from a faint ray of moonlight falling in through the opening of your tent. You hear a muffled sound. Then, a whispering voice. Damn you. If he has heard us, the mission is lost. Come now, quick and quiet. Slowly, the flag of your tent is moved aside. The moonlight illuminates two shadowy figures holding long daggers. You have just the time to rise and reach for your weapon before the figures move swiftly towards you. Ooh, it's battle time. We got rogues attacking us here. Oh, assassins. Alright, well, at least my health has been refilled. Um. Oh, I'm poisoned. Okay, well, at least the assassins seem to have just one HP pool. I'm not fighting two different targets. Oh, they're faster than me, too. Ooh, I missed. Uh, two second wind. And try attacking again. Good hit. And healing potion. Yes. How much is that going to restore? Oh! Restores a lot. I'm glad I used it when I was kind of low. Do another power attack. It missed! Oh, that's not good. Alright, find another second wind. At least second wind doesn't seem to actually use our turn. That's a nice thing. Oh, I don't have power attack back yet, do I? Nope. Okay. Let's hope I can take them out. Oh. This is really not good. Oh, if I can get one more hit off on them. Okay. I should have bought a second potion. Okay. Just let it connect. Oh, I barely won. Whew! Nice chunk of experience, though. Oh, come on. I should get something from them. The shadowy figures lie defeated before you. They wear black leather clothes, their faces hidden behind black scarves. The daggers that lie in their now lifeless hands have a wavy blade and seem coated with a strange substance. Oh, we're definitely searching them. As you search the assassins, you find an expensive looking piece of parchment, folded neatly in two. As you open it, you see it's a letter, written in a flowing, elegant handwriting. The letter reads, Your mission is this. Enter the tournament grounds at night. Find the warrior the master has warned us about, and destroy him. He must not be allowed to live. The master commands it. The letter is unsigned. A further search of the assassins reveals a concealed leather pouch, holding 20 golden coins. As you complete your search of the strange men, you decide that leaving them dead in your tent would cause some questions to be raised. With effort, you take up the men and carry them swiftly and silently out of your tent to the edge of the tournament field, where you hide their bodies in the thick underbrush. Whew. Well... That was actually a tough fight. Uh, I... Oh, hey! He's back! Let's see what he has to say. As you come upon Fazold's tent, you see Fazold sitting at the edge of the little pond. He is bending over and seems to be muttering something to the quiet water. As you come closer, you notice that the water's surface seems to glow slightly with an almost indiscernible silver glow. I don't know, my lady. You hear Fazold whisper. The hero is strong and a brave warrior. It will be enough. Suddenly, Basil seems to become aware of your presence. He stiffens, but then rights himself and slowly stands up. As he does so, the silver glow upon the surface of the pond disappears. Basil turns towards you with a smile. Ah, welcome, hero. How very nice of you to visit me. I was just... 
daydreaming a bit. I find that sitting quietly and gazing across the waters of this pond allows my thoughts to soar with eager wings. Basil smiles. But come, how may I help you? Perhaps I might tell you some more about King Vadunia and his provinces. We have lots of questions. Well, why not? Let's just ask about Idunia. The most important province of the kingdom is the province of Idunia. It's a beautiful, prosperous province with green meadows and fertile fields covered with golden corn stalks. The royal city is a sight to behold. It is always buzzing with activity and houses the famous guild of royal adventurers. In the heart of the city lies the royal palace, from which King Valdemar rules the kingdom. Finally, the royal city houses the fortress of the royal army, decorated with shields and flags waving in the wind. That's cool. I won't bother sticking around and asking all the other stuff. And, you know what? I think it's very important we buy some armor now. As you arrive at the tent, you see Bjarni talking to two royal officers. The officers seem to be asking him several questions, to which Bjarni replies by shaking his head and raising his shoulders. After a moment, the officers take their leave and Bjarni turns towards you. Ah, friend, good you're here. Seems there has been some excitement last night. They have found the bodies of two men, assassins, it would seem. At least, that is what the officers told me. Bjarni looks at you with interest. But what they were after has apparently got the better of them. At any rate, good riddance to the scum, I say. Now, how can I help you? Ooh. Of course, now there's a broadsword. Um, let's do chainmail. Oh, we don't have enough gold? Really? Darn it. We must have been completely out of money. Let's see. Does it tell us in our items? Hmm. It doesn't actually... Oh, there it is. It's down at the bottom. 25. Yeah. Well, you know what? I think this is a good place to leave it off. Uh, let's Actually, you know what? No, let's talk to the potion girl. See if she says anything interesting. As you come upon Sirius' tent, you see her sitting outside in the grass. She has crossed her legs beneath her. Her hands rest on her hips, and she has closed her eyes. A great call emanates from her. As you approach, she slowly opens her eyes. There is something strange about her eyes. A silver fog seems to cloud them, a flowing, whirling fog. A silver millstrom pulling you in, drawing you towards its depths, towards a place beyond this world. But then the fog starts to clear from her eyes, and her eyes become clear and blue again. Ciri seems to awaken from a deep slumber. Hi, my friend. I did not see you there. Ciri smiles at you, but then her smile fades. But I did see you. In the great weave, I felt your presence, and I felt a goddess watching over you. And I saw many strands of the great weave come together where you were. Many futures, many possibilities. Ciri falls silent for a moment. You have a part to play in the future, my friend. A most important part. But what it is, I cannot say. Ciri smiles. But don't be burdened by it. The goddess watches over you, and her power is fast. Now, how may I help you? I'm guessing... Oh! She has a new potion! Strength potion! Uh, nah, we're good. What? I said leave. Apparently the hitbox was off slightly, so I have a magic potion now, which serves probably no purpose for me. And anyway... Now I think that's going to do it. This is an interesting game. It's got a good premise starting out. The battle system is decently well made. That Assassin's Battle was actually pretty tough. And there's a making here of a very interesting story. We've got people who know quite a bit that we don't, which has me slightly intrigued. I'm looking forward to seeing more of what this game has to uh, do with, you know, what they're going to do with the whole plot as it goes along. I'm actually going to put a link to the page where you can view this game in the description so you can take a look for yourself and follow along, see what happens as the game eventually releases. 
And a huge thank you to the developer for letting me know about this so I can give it a try. It actually feels kind of like you're playing a D&D &D game, how there's a dungeon master dictating what you find and describing it. It's a great way to do it when there's not a whole lot of really detailed art assets. You can still provide some interesting descriptions. But that will end up doing it. So if you have any suggestions for other One Shot Saturdays, leave them in the comments. I'd always love to hear them. And I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you have, click like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys next time.